Welcome back. Um, we are going to a cram. <laughs> has many endings in today as we can. But to get here, you knock on the door, apologize, don't serenade her, <laughs> um, don't make it a joke. It's say it's no problem, change the subject, pick orange juice. Uh, say it's like a pre raphaelite painting. Um, say she looks defiant. Don't answer the door. Wake her up. Why do I have an alarm? Cool. So... Yeah, if you want to get to where we're at, knock on the door, apologize, say it's no problem, change the subject, pick orange juice, say it's a pre-Raphaelite painting, She look, say she looks defiant, don't answer the door. For real, in real life, don't answer the door. Um, And wake up Anita. So we are just about to wake up Anita now. Hey, Anita, get up. <laughs> and this will be ending one, I think. Listen, you need to get up now. This is an emergency. Oh, what is it? I heard something coming from the other room. Anita shoots me a quizzical stare. You woke me up for that? It's probably nothing. No, this is different. I was listening for a while. It didn't sound right. How so? To use your quote, I just have a bad feeling. Call it intuition if you want, but there have been far too many oddities for my liking. At this remark, Anita sat straight with her eyes out open wide as if she just remembered something horrible. Anita's eyes do be very wide. You don't think it's related to whoever made that knocking sound on the door, do you? Crap, I kind of forgot about that. How do you forget about that? Call the police. No, call the fire department. <laughs> oh God, you've got me scared now. Did you really see, hear something? You're not messing with me, are you? This would be the time to tell me if you are. I hate practical jokes. For the last time, I'm dead serious about this. You know me. This isn't the kind of crap I do. Well, I like practical jokes so long as no one is scared or hurt. Like, where everyone's having a good time, you know? Look, we can't stay if there's someone something wrong. We have to at least take a look and make sure what that noise was. But what if something is wrong? Maybe we should just hide in here. Yeah, hide under the bed. That's not an option. <laughs> the devs. We can't stay in here if there's trouble. That's why we need to check it out. Come on, we'll do it together. Just stay close to me. Uh, all right, lead the way. This is very Blitz and Stolas. Oh, that last episode. I say nothing. I say nothing. But they're both wrong. I, oh. Is it Monday? Okay. I opened the bedroom door ever so slightly enough to poke a head out into the hallway. Standing still like a statue, I listened intently for any evidence of the sound returning. Frozen on the spot, I was alert. Can't hear it. Okay. Frozen on the spot, I was alert when a voice whispered behind me. Sorry, they're doing lawn maintenance. Do you hear anything? Not this time. Where was it coming from? I couldn't tell. Let's move downstairs, but be careful. 
We don't want to give ourselves away. Push her down the stairs. Sorry. Coffee. I haven't been in the pool in like two days and it's making me achy. Right behind you. Excuse me. We tippy toed lightly across the hallway and down the stairs, slowly taking our steps as to not make a sound. So far, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. I just hope that doesn't change anytime soon. Oh, it changed. We came to the living room. Nothing immediately jumped to out to my attention. But then again, I wouldn't be able to tell if something subtle was different. If it was my own house, I'm sure anything this place would be obvious to me. I let Anita take charge of the investigation. Looks like whatever it was that was making the noise is gone. Is everything okay in here? Nothing fell or anything like that. Not as far as I can tell. It looks like how we left it. We scanned the room a little more, splitting off momentarily to cover more ground. I wasn't sure what I was looking out for, so I returned to Anita and found her standing motionless in the center of the room. I'm going to save right here for posterity's sake. Close your eyes. <laughs> um, I wasn't, okay. Hey, are you okay? What is it? It was hard to see in the dark, but there was an unmistakable look of, look in her eyes, a look of fear. Ooh, God. What, what is it? Look, over there. I followed the direction of her finger directed towards the painting. Do you see that? Tell me you see that. I blinked my eyes trying to clear away any weariness that might have clouded my vision. There was nothing wrong with my eyes, however. It was clear we both saw the same thing. Sorry, I have hiccups. What the actual hell? Stop it, Thrill. The woman in the painting, she's gone. <laughs> How is this possible? Paint thinner. I clutched the top of my head, nails digging into my scalp, hoping against hope that I was still dreaming and that I might wake up at any moment. There was no such end from this nightmare, however. This was really happening. Holy shit, how is this even possible? This is seriously messed up. No way. It can't just change like that. It's impossible. This thing is bad. It's cursed for sure. Oh god, what do we do? I concur. Before I could answer, her attention was a draw. God damn it. Our attention was drawn to the thin sheet of fog that suddenly filled the room. Where the hell did this come from? Maybe it came from outside. Did you leave a window open somewhere? That's a stupid an analogy. Um, no, and even if I did, <laughs> look how fast the place became misty. It was clear a moment ago. A regular fog can't just appear like this. This night just keeps getting weirder. Rachel looked at the painting. Somet something's happening. It's glowing. True to her word, the painting glimmered with ethereal energy. It pulsed like the beating of a heart. The rhythmic throb gave it an impression of a living creature. Across the surface, a streak of light rippled outward, like the paint parting of a curtains. Like the parting of curtains. I can read. Now and then, light catches the canvas, and it appeared like there was something else unusual about it. The light danced on the surface, and something didn't seem right about the space between the frames. I almost shouted in astonishment when it dawned on me. The painting's surface was no longer flat. 
Inside it contained a new dimension that disappeared into the wall. Do you see that? The painting goes inward. It's like there's a tunnel. How? There should be a wall right behind it. No shit, Sherlock. It must be some kind of portal. Rachel's catching on quick. A portal? Where do you think it goes? No idea. Wonderland? As we stood staring at the strange painting, a familiar sound came from above. Did you hear that? Yeah, that was the sound you heard before. Definitely, it's coming from upstairs. Hey, where are you going? I'm going to take a look. I think it's coming from my parents' room. What about the painting? Don't you think we should take a closer look at it? Maybe we can find where it leads to. Are you kidding me? I think we should stay the fuck away from it. Who knows what it is and what it can do? But what if it changes again? It might not stay this way for long. This might be our only chance to see what's happening before the passageway closes. How do you know it's a passageway? How do you know how long it's open? And when are you a paranormal investigator? Maybe we'll find out more about what we're dealing with this way. There was something else that I didn't tell her about, though. I felt something going from the paint, coming from the painting. Something called out to me. Was it a voice? A faint memory lingered in my mind. I've seen this place before. If only I could remember it. You investigate painting. <clears throat> I'm going to examine it a little closer. It'll only take a minute. Fish. Rachel, I don't think I want to go near it. Okay, Anita's got some brain cells up there. Um, stay there if you want. Nothing bad will happen, I promise you. The portal will probably close any minute anyway, so just hang tight for a moment. Be careful, okay? I muster enough courage and step toward, closer towards the otherworldly painting. Ooh, the decisive words I spoke to Anita betrayed the caution I felt, but something compelled me to inspect the painting. Something more than mere curiosity. Each step I take feels heavy, like I'm wading through a thick, invisible substance. Like water? <laughs> Sorry. Um, I understand that the English might be a little... Hmm. Anyway. Um, I volunteer as tribute to help for free on the English side. I couldn't tell if it was some supernatural force or my body fighting to turn back. Well, what do you see? Not a whole lot. It's quite hard to see anything with this fog in the way. Something just moved inside the frame. Did you see it? There? Right in front of you. Anita's warning didn't reach my ears. The outside world faded into a wall of mist. I'm sorry for the white screen. I had black screen everything. This is just the game. The boundaries of the room melted away, and I no longer recognized where I was. The world as I knew it was hidden away. Maybe just, like, sweat or, like, or sunglasses. Fuck. Okay, this is, these are blue light glasses. Um, sorry, you won't be able to see my eyes very well. They have glare. All that existed at that moment was me and the painting, isolated in time. We were the only things alive. Oddly, I didn't revel in this strange situ situation long as my attention was pulled back to the thing in front of me. The painting was within touching distance. Ooh, touch it. Touch the butt. That's from Finding Nemo, not our past tr president. Just saying. I don't want any confusion. Um, <laughs> a second glance, I began to see the silhouette of a figure inside the canvas. 
its small form approached me. Rachel? You know my name? Who the fuck are you? The world inside the painting was filled with the dense fog that hid the stranger. Have you forgotten me that quickly? Yo, I forgot people in a New York minute. My memory is toasted. I can't see you. The fog is too thick. If you come closer, maybe I can see you more clearly. The figure on the other side of the painting silently moved closer. Can you see me now? <laughs> is that like a State Park commercial? Old AT&T commercial. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Good. I strained my eyes. The form of a young girl materialized, but the details remained hazy. I, I see you. Who are you? What are you doing here? Don't you recognize me? I just stepped into a fucking portal. I don't recognize shit. I don't believe... The veil of smoke dissipates a little enough for me to make out her face. Something had been eating away at me at the back of my mind. I heard that voice before, very recently, in another world, but that was only a dream. I think the... I think dreams are very thinly veiled like passageways I don't know don't listen to me <sighs> um even though all this felt just as unreal I knew I was awake this time she looked just as I remembered her from two years ago that's startling I wish I could get kidnapped in that way <laughs> just knock off a few years Hannah, oh my god, Hannah, is that really you? The vision of my little sister was faint, but I recognized her all the same. Since you haven't forgotten about me, have you? I can never forget about you. I've dreamed of this moment every night since the day you were gone. I can't believe I'd get the chance to see you again. Oh god, Hannah, it's so good to see you. I've missed you so much, I can't begin to tell you. I missed you too, sis. You look just how I remember you. I'm happy about that. I knew you'd find me one day. You always look out for me. When I got into trouble, I knew you wouldn't give up on me. Everyone else did, but not you. Just like when I started playing netball in school, I wasn't very good and no one wanted me on their team. You were the only one who would pick me. You believed in me and encouraged me. You weren't bad. All you needed was confidence in yourself. That's why I knew you'd be the one to find me. I'm your big sister. It's my job to look after you, to a certain extent. But I screwed that up. How could I let my little sister go missing for so long? I couldn't get to you sooner. I didn't have any idea what to do. We didn't know what happened to you. Rachel, it's not your fault. You can still help. What happened to you that day? Where did you go? I... I don't know. I don't remember a lot. Just some small things. Try your best to remember. Give me something. Anything that comes to mind. Oh, white screen of death. I was walking home from school. This guy with a van and some black balloons picked me up. I'm kidding. That's... Watch black phone. Um... I think I was with somebody. I can't remember who. I remember trees being cold and wet. I think something bad might have happened. Oh, Susie Q, Susie Salmon. I'm getting lovely bones vibes now. Don't worry, Hannah, I'm here now. I won't let anything bad happen to you anymore. Just tell me where you are. I'm trapped in this strange place. It's not normal, things don't seem right here. It doesn't work like how things work in our world. Our world? What are you saying? Yo, if you haven't watched or read The Lovely Bones, please do. It's very insightful. I don't know how I got here, but for some reason, I understand the rules of this place. It's like a prison, and there are lots of things stuck here. Right now, the door is open, but it won't stay open for long. You have to help me pass through the door. I'll help you, Hannah. Just tell me what I need to do. 
Hannah looked sheepishly to the side. Whatever she needed to ask for was difficult. I don't know how to say this. Wait, screen of death. Hey, it'll be alright. We're family. You can always trust me. The thing is, I can't leave this place. I can leave this place, but I need to follow the rules. Whoever leaves, someone needs to stay in their place. That's a good way to keep the painting stocked. <sighs> so whose place did you take? So I can't come back unless someone else stays behind inside the painting. My heart sinks into a dark corner inside my chest. The realization of what she asked snuffed out all hope in me. One of us had to remain inside the painting. We would still be separated. After all the unbelievable joy of seeing Hannah again after all these years, the bitterness of remaining apart was too much to bear. Before I knew it, a stream of tears poured down my face and nothing could stop my sobbing. That's not fair. It's just not fair. We're supposed to be together. How could I make this choice? No matter what I do, both of us won't be going home. The way I see it is a lose-lose situation. Rachel, please don't leave me here. I want to go home. I want to see mom and dad again. I miss them so much. You have to help me get out of here. You have to. For a while, I sobbed helplessly as Hannah looked on. She was remarkably strong for someone of her age and kept a brave face while I broke down. Yo, that ain't even your sister. So mature and yet so young, she must have been through more than I could have imagined. In the vacuum of mist, another sound cut through my cries. Rachel, Rachel! The voice called to me from behind. Anita! It escaped my mind that we were still in her living room. A lot escapes your mind, girl. <clears throat> you should get like a CAT scan or some shit. Um, the conversation with my sister inside the wall of mist seemed to last forever. I had forgotten that Anita was patiently waiting for me a few paces back. Is someone with you? No. Just my long lost forgotten sister. That doesn't make me sound crazy. Yes, I'm with Anita. Do you remember her? We were at her house. Hannah looks at me with distaste, an expression that didn't belong on her sweet face. Why are you at her house? You shouldn't be around someone like her. What do you mean? She's my friend. We're having a sleepover. Hannah fidgeted, clearly annoyed with something. But why does she have the painting in her house? It's her dad. He bought it from an auction not long ago. Is that what she told you? Yes. Where else could it have come from? I don't believe her. Anita, why? I don't trust her. She's bad. I just know it. Planting seeds of doubt. I don't really know her. What are you saying? Hannah returned to looking away awkwardly. There was still fire in her eyes. I don't know what to tell you. I don't remember everything. She's just not a nice person. You shouldn't be with someone like her. Rachel, can you hear me? What's happening? What do you see? Anita's yell was barely audible. Somehow the mist was blocking more than our visibility. Probably the conversation. <laughs> because if I were Anita and hearing this, I'd be running. I'm here, I'm fine. Don't tell her I'm here. No shit. Hey, um, I'm in the portrait and my long lost sister is here with me. What's good? Big sis, listen, we don't have much time left. I can feel the door begin to close. Like I said before, someone needs to stay behind for me to come out. It doesn't have to be you or me. I look at Hannah square in the eyes. I have already sacrificed Anita in a previous gameplay. You can't ask me that. 
It's the only way, Rachel. I'm sorry, but we have no other choice. I want to go home. I want to go home with you. It's not right for me to stay here, but I don't want you to take my place. It should be, Anita. We can go home together if Anita stays... It should be, Anita. We can go home together if Anita stays behind. I know it's a hard thing to ask. She's your friend. Are you okay? Bless you. Do you want a treat? Treatsies. 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 Go see daddy. <clears throat> she's your friend, but there's something she's hiding. I wish I can remember what, what it is. I don't think it will be a bad thing if she's the one to swap with me. Hannah, you can't talk like that. You really can't talk like that. You haven't seen the things I've seen. What happened to me isn't right. It's not right for me to be here. Away from you, and you shouldn't be the one to stay either. I'm tired, Rachel. I want to go home. Let's go home together. I wonder what leaving Hannah does. Um, I've already sacrificed Rachel, and that's one ending. So, or sacrificed Anita, and that's one ending. So I'm going to sacrifice Rachel. I'm sorry, Hannah. I'm sorry for everything you've been through. I wish things could go back to the way they were before, but that's not possible. The truth is I can't betray Anita and live with myself. You deserve to return home. That's something I can do, but I can't be there with you. What are you saying? I'll take your place. After all the suffering I found you, I told you that it's my job to look after you and that's what big sisters do, to a degree. Unless you're toxic. I'll finally be able to save you now. Rachel, are you sure this is what you wanna do? It's the only way. Hannah, I love you so much. Please take care of mom and dad, and don't you worry about me. This isn't your fault. Go on and live a good life. Yours was stolen from you. You deserve a second go at it. So live the life you always wanted, and know that your sister is very proud of you. Now yeet! <laughs> Just kick her right out of that painting. With my final words, I stepped forward into the painting. The tingling sensations surged through my body as I passed through the barrier between the two worlds. Leaving behind the world I knew, this new realm felt cold and lonely. I felt an immense force push down on me like the atmosphere was suddenly heavier. This really gives like the lonely bones vibes of the different worlds that they go through. I turned to see the portal closing up. In a fraction of time, I caught a final glance of Hannah on the other side. She was back home. That memory is something I can hold on to in the trying times to follow. My sister has been found. I can take solace in this. If this were a horror movie, she would have, like, after killing Anita, uh, um, after, um, unaliving Anita. God damn it, I can't talk for YouTube. I'm going to have to do so much editing. <laughs> um, if this were a horror movie, I think Hannah would have unalived Anita the second she got to another side, the other side, and then unalived, self-exited herself. And that way, both families are in mourning because they just lost three kids. Something icy touched my cheek. My cold teardrop shook me back to reality. I couldn't tell if it was the tears that clouded my vision or the mist that swirled around me. Everything was hard to see in the shadows. Ooh, it's dark again. I felt the presence of others. Below me, I saw a giant well where the mist spiraled towards. I stared into the abyss and pondered the journey ahead. Jump! 
The mist will catch you. Maybe it won't. Ending one, lost in the dark. What'd y'all think? Toka. Is this it? This is it. Hey Anita, get the fuck up. <laughs> you need to get up now. This is an emergency. What is it? I heard something coming from the other room. Do you have a pet hamster you haven't told me about? Anita shoots me a quizzical glare. You woke me up for that? It's probably nothing. No, this is different. I was listening for a while. It didn't sound right. How so? Sound like a fucking hamster. To use your quote, I just have a bad feeling. Call it intuition if you want, but there have been far too, far too many oddities lately for my liking. At this remark, Anita sat straight up with her eyes open wide as if she just remembered something horrible. I live here. <laughs> if this house is haunted, I fucking live here. <laughs> God damn it. Put a finger down if you've lived in a haunted house before. No, for real. Comment on it and tell me what it was like. I love haunted house stories. So much. You don't think it's related to whoever made that knocking sound on the door, do you? Crap, I kind of forgot about that. Oh god, you've got me scared now. Your memory sucks. <laughs> do you really hear some did you really hear something? You're not messing with me? Are you? This would be though of time to tell me if you are. For the last time I'm dead serious. This isn't the kind of crap I do. Look, we can't stay here if something's wrong. We have to at least take a look and make sure what the noise was. No, we don't. That's not an option. We can't stay in here if, some, if there's trouble. That's why we need to check it out. Come on, we'll do it together. Just stay close to me. You know what? Anita can stay the fuck in her room. And you can go check it out. In her house. That makes no sense. But Anita's a little scaredy cat. Look at those little eyes. She's so scared. With her little eyebrows all... <coughs> Usually her eyes are bugging. All right, lead the way. Thank you for the fire break, fire. I opened the bedroom door ever so slightly, enough to poke my head out into the hallway. Standing still like a statue, I listened intently for any evidence of the sound returning. Frozen on spot, I was alert when a voice whispered behind me. Do you hear anything? Not just you. 
Not this time. Where was it coming from? The upper left quadrant of your master bathroom. I don't know the layout of your house, bitch. <laughs> I couldn't tell. Let's move downstairs. But be careful. We don't want to give ourselves away. Right behind you. Well, you know what? Why don't you hop on my back? <laughs> so I can literally carry you. <laughs> Hang on. Okay, you, we investigate sound. We tiptoed lightly across the hallway and down the stairs, slowly taking our own steps. Slowly taking our steps as not to make a sound. So I didn't carry her. So far, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. I just hope that doesn't change anytime soon. We came to the living room. Nothing immediately jumped out at, to my attention. But then again, I wouldn't be able to tell if something subtle was different. If it was my house, I'm sure I'm, anything misplaced would be obvious to me. I let Anita take charge of the investigation. Looks like whatever it was that was making that noise is gone. The picture, the picture. Is everything okay in here? Nothing foul or anything like that? Not as far as I can tell. It looks like how we left it, except far less sinister, except far more sinister. <laughs> we scanned the room a little more, splitting off momentarily to cover more ground. I wasn't sure what I was looking out for, so I returned to Anita and found her standing motionless in the center of the room. Hey, are you okay? What is it? It was hard to see in the dark, but there was an unmistakable look in her eyes. A look of fear. Oh god. What? What is it? L look over there. I followed the direction of her finger, directed towards the painting. Do you see that? Tell me you see that. Or rather, don't see that. I blinked my eyes, trying to clear any weariness away that the night might have clouded, used to cloud my vision. I paraphrase. Uh, there was nothing wrong with my eyes. However, it was clear we both saw the same thing. What the actual fuck? The woman in the painting. She's gone. How is this possible? I clutched the top of my head, nails digging into my scalp, hoping against hope that I was still dreaming and that I might wake up at any moment. There was no such end from this nightmare. However, this was really happening. Holy shit, how is this even possible? This is seriously messed up. Honestly. There go the bug out eyes. No way, it can't just change like that. It's impossible. I assure you with paint thinner, it is not. This thing is bad. It's cursed for sure. Oh God, what do we do? Before I could answer, our attention was drawn to the thin sheet of fog that suddenly filled the room. Where the hell did this come from? Maybe it came from outside. Did you leave a window open somewhere? I hate repeating this dialogue. No, and even if I did, how, look how fast this place became misty. It was clear a moment ago. A regular fog can't just appear like this. This night just keeps getting weirder. Rachel, look at the painting. Something's happening. It's glowing. True to her word, the painting glimmered with ethereal energy. To be fair, I don't hate the dialogue. I hate repeating the dialogue. It's not repetitive itself. I'm repetitive. It pulsed like the beating of the heart. The rhythmic throb gave it an impression of a living creature. Across the surface, the streak of light rippled outward like the painting, like the parting of curtains. 
Now and then light catches the canvas and it appeared like there was something else unusual about it. The light danced on the surface and something didn't seem right about the space between the frames. I almost shouted in astonishment when it dawned on me. The painting surface was no longer flat. Inside it contained a new dimension that disappeared into the wall. Do you see that? The painting goes inward. It looks like there's a tunnel. How? There should be a wall right behind it. It must be some kind of portal. A portal? Where do you think it goes? No idea. As we stood staring at the strange painting, a familiar sound came from above. God? <laughs> Yep, familiar silence. <laughs> no one there. <sighs> Did you hear that? Yeah, nothing. Yeah, that was that the sound you heard before? Definitely, it's coming from upstairs. Let's go investigate, Scooby Gang. I'm going to take a look. I think it's coming from my parents' room. What about the painting? Don't you think we should take a closer look at it? Maybe find out where it leads to? Are you kidding me? I think we should stay the fuck away from it. Who knows what it is and what it can do? But what if it changes again? It might not stay this way for long. This might be our only chance to see what's happening before the passageway closes or we salt and burn it. Maybe. We'll find out more about what we're dealing with that way. There was something else that I didn't tell her about, though. I felt something coming from the painting. Something called out to me. Was it a voice? A faint memory lingered in my mind. I've seen this place before. If only I could remember it. Investigate sound. Anita, stay Rachel, go. We should investigate what that sound was. That's the immediate issue. The painting can wait. It isn't going anywhere after all. If you say so. Okay, let's go see what's in my parents' room. Let's not. Oh, is there an option to not? Why are you cautiously sneaking? Cautiously, we sneaked upstairs Approaching the bedroom of Anita's parents, the source of the peculiar noise we've heard all night. The hair on the back of my neck pricks up as we find ourselves outside the closed door. <sighs> no one wants you, bird. <laughs> Who knows what we'll find inside. After sh Shut the fuck up! After what I've witnessed so far tonight, I was afraid what the answer might be. Pressing an ear gently to the door, I listened intently. Anything? Shh, keep it down. I can't hear anything. Hopefully that means nothing's inside. We should just leave it and go back to our room. Don't be a coward, be a coward. We need to be sure nothing's wrong. Something's wrong. Okay, get ready. I'm going in. Anita, you need to stay the fuck out of that room. Stay the fuck out of that room, Anita. I slowly turned the handle and pushed the door open. Anita was clinging onto my arm as she peeked over the shoulder. Should be clinging onto your arm in a second. We both gasped at the same time. Naked woman in my bedroom. half expected to see nothing out of the ordinary. The other part of me was bracing to see a scary monster waiting to grab us. Is this what someone's testimony testimony sounded? Oh god. I'm not, I'm not buying it. They make fun of it. It doesn't go well in the end. But it, he's doing okay. Hmm. Really lucky or really stupid? 
What I didn't expect to find was a stranger in the house sprawled naked on the floor. She scrambled desperately to create some distance between us and herself. Her wide open eyes were fixed on us. She seems just as scared and surprised as we were. Who are you? What's going on? Where am I? I broke out of the huddle Anita and I unconsciously formed. Evidently, there was no immediate dangers to us. You are a bad judge of character, bitch. I could ask you the same thing. Who are you and how did you get in here? That's fair. The mysterious woman continued to scream. She was in no condition to answer our, quest our questions. Bitch is screaming. Throw a blanket on her. They do it in like... Even ambulances, it's therapeutic for trauma. Throw a blanket on that bitch. <laughs> Be like, you're, you're part of the bug under the rug club now. Anita stepped forward to try and reassure her, holding up both hands in a sign of amenity. Amity? Amity. Amity? Amity. What do I keep saying? Amity. Amity. It's okay. It's okay. Please don't shout. Honestly, me. Try to relax. You're not in any danger. No one's going to hurt you. Just don't fucking give me a migraine. This is a safe place. Yeah, that's right. We're not here to hurt you. You can trust us, so please calm down. The woman seemed convinced by her earnest pleading and regained control of herself. You see, everything's gonna be all right. We're all friends here. We'll take care of you. The woman called down, calmed down and relaxed. Now that she was composed, it struck me how beautiful she was. Yeah, she looks hot as shit. Um, her petite figure resembled a flower. Her skin was soft and fair as if she wore a pearl shell. Her jet black hair was smooth and glistened in cold, the cold air. She was a beauty I had never seen before. These details were not lost on Anita as I saw her react with a blush. Oh. Happy Pride Month. My name's Anita. This is my house. That's Rachel over there. She's a good friend of mine. What's your name? The strange woman sat up slowly, still carrying a look of confusion. I, I don't have a name. You don't have a name? I mean, I don't remember one. That's okay. It's not too important right now. Can you tell us what happened to you and how you got here? I, I don't remember that either. I don't remember a lot of things. I do remember a strange place full of smoke. I was trapped there for the longest time. The painting. You mean the painting downstairs. That's right. She's the girl from the painting. I totally recognize her. Shove her back in. <laughs> Say it into the mic. <laughs> that was actually adorable. Say it into the mic. <laughs> there you go. The girl from the painting. You know, the painting. The girl from downstairs. The painting. The the girl for the painting, you know, crop. Uh, Hit her on the head. Hit her on the head. I, dude, I really be here like, hit her on the head. <laughs> and you're just like, that painting. Oh my god, you're adorable. I didn't ever want to grow up to be a Disney princess. I wanted to be a freedom fighter. I loved Esmeralda. <laughs> but, um... I grew up to be Yzma, so, you know, you can't win them all. <laughs> Anita and I shared a glance. Everything bad seems to be connected to that damn painting. Actually, honestly, if I'm a Disney princess, I'm a Disney prince, and it's Cusco. <laughs> On my bad days, I Yzma. I think I was kidnapped. What? <laughs> there was a man. I've never seen him before, and I don't know what he wanted. He put me in inside the painting. I don't think there were supposed to be two ends. It's fine. It turned out that it leads to another world. 
A world that's darker and more durable than this one. I was lost in there for a long time. I don't know exactly how long. It's hard to tell the passage of time once you're inside. There is no night or day. It's hard to tell what's up and what's down. There's nothing to ground yourself with. That sounds horrible, you poor thing. How did you escape? I'm sorry, but that's another thing I can't remember. You can't remember an awful fucking lot. Bitch, what's your social? I don't know what happened to my memory. Maybe it has something to do with being locked up in this place for so long. I just remember wandering that strange land forever, and the next thing I know, I'm here. I may not know how I got here, but I'm so glad that I'm free at last. Whoever put me there was a bad man. I'm scared of what he will do when he finds out that I've escaped. Please, you can't let him find me. You have to protect me. Uh, okay. Don't worry. Well, we'll try to help you as much as we can. We won't let that guy get you. Thank you. I'm sorry to intrude on you like this. Uh, you're naked her parents room anyway you're safe here for now we'll take care of you while we wait to get the police involved at the very least we should get some clothes for her we can't have her sitting around naked Anita do you have something we can dress her in yes there's a dressing gown in my room by dressing gown she means a robe like a bathrobe because that got me at first Okay, then. We should go get that. Wait, what about her? We can't just leave her alone. Yes, you can. Someone should... She's been alone this whole time. Leave her alone. Someone should keep an eye on her just in case. And need to stay, Rachel, go. I'll go get her clothes and call the police. You should stay put and make sure she's all right. Been through enough as it is. Try to comfort her if you can. She still seems distraught with what's going on. Um, you can count on me. I mean, I'll do my best. Yeah, you will. Don't worry, I won't be long. Hey, Rachel? Yeah. Oh, nothing. Just hurry back, okay? I wonder what Anita was about to tell me. She might deny it, but I sense something was on her mind. I'll have to grill her about that later. Ooh, not even an hour yet. Um, for now, the immediate matter is to sort out the situation of the stranger in the house. Standing in the hallway, I took out my phone and dialed the number to the police. As the phone rang, I wondered what time it was. God, it's nearly 4 a.m. I'll bet there's no chance of us getting back to sleep after this. The phone continued to ring. Why hasn't anyone answered yet? Surely this should be the least busy hour for the police. 4 a.m.? Hell no. What's hap What's holding them up? A static noise cut out through the line. The sharp tone was like a knife to my ear. I considered hanging up when someone finally answered on the other side. What's your emergency? Hello, I need the police. Someone escaped abduction and is taking shelter in the house. We're at my friend's place. Can you send someone over? Before we get to that, we need you to answer a few questions for us. Can you do that, young miss? Absolutely not. You just assumed my gender and asked me to answer questions for you. All I need to give you is the address. Bitch. Sure. Are you and your friend the only people in the house? Well, yes. It's the two of us and the stranger that came out of the... I mean, they just appeared inside the house. You don't need to tell them that. You just found this person in the house. You don't know how they got there. You don't need to tell them that. I don't know. Maybe through a window or something. And your parents, where are they? You definitely don't need to tell them that. Um, you can say they're in the fucking living room. 
I'm staying over at my friend's place. Her parents are working out of town. Oh, that don't tell them that. <laughs> Definitely don't tell them that. About your friend, how long have you known her? Her? Again, properly gendering people you don't know. Since we were kids, why do you need to know that? Young miss, we we're just asking you questions here. They are essential for us. You need to ask the address. We were just asking questions here. They're essential for us to get a clear picture of what we're dealing with. Don't you have enough to go on? No, they don't know where your house is. Why are you asking pointless questions? It seems a little strange for me, to me for as someone you claim to have just escaped abduction to freely climb back into another stranger's house. Okay, we do this every time. Is it weird? A little bit? No, we've done this conversation every time. Is it weird for someone who was just kidnapped to immediately seek shelter in someone else's house? No. Okay. Sus. <clears throat> Sus on you, operator. There is a whole movie about, like, people seeking shelter in someone's house, and they turn out to be, like, the parents of the children that just tormented the fuck out of them, and they had to kill the kids, and then the parents... Yeah, it does! And now I want to watch it. Anyway... <laughs> if you know what the name of that movie is, can you comment it? Because um, I'm bad at explaining things and Google knows that. I know you don't know what it is. Why would you know what it is? You hate horror. Um, it seems a little strange to me for someone you claim to have just escaped abduction to freely climb back into another stranger's house. No, they're getting help. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Put some bass in my voice. Um, what are you implying? I'm the one calling you for help. Like, we're not keeping her. <laughs> it's a catch and release. Just send someone over, and you can ask as many questions as you want. There's no need to be hasty. I know you want to say it. <laughs> of course there is. We have a stranger in the house right now. I think that is reason enough for you to do something about it, honestly. Don't you think there's something you're missing here? Do you believe something can be gained for free? I'm not trying to gain anything. Nothing is free in this world, child. What a creepy operator. Are you Ted Bundy? For something to escape, there must be an exchange. What, what are you talking about? We'll send someone over in time. Just try to keep an eye on the woman. The woman? What in the fuck do you know? Wait. How do you know she's a woman? I never told you that. Girl, you are slow on the pickup. Who are you? The call went dead, leaving nothing but the dial tone ringing in my ear. And you didn't give them an address. What the hell was that about? How did he know about her? This is bad. I better tell Anita about this bizarre call later. <sighs> this is bad. <clears throat> I tried to put the incident out of my mind and continued to Anita's room. The only thing with the semblance of normalcy in this house. Want to spam emails? Yeah. Ooh. Can you guess my favorite? After you spam them all. You want me to guess your favorite? Yeah. Favorite, um, customized and favorite animated. After you spam them all, put two. I want to see if you got it right. Um, standing here felt like stepping back in time before all the madness began. A snapshot of our mundane quiet lives. Something made me feel like we can't return to those times anymore. Get a grip, Rachel. You can't think like that. 
let's just work this out one step at a time. As long as Anita and I are together, we should be safe. We'll have each other's back. I rummaged through her wardrobe for the robe Anita instructed me to bring her. Her room is such a mess, it's a wonder how she ever finds anything in here. <clears throat> Why exactly am I the one looking through her belongings anyway? She is getting it. After searching a while, I found the robe in question. I hope I didn't keep a wa Anita waiting too long. You did. <clears throat> oh, I gotta see the emojis. <laughs> It is Nifty and Alistair laughing for the, um, for the animated emojis, actually. It's a toss-up between that and the Gengar evolution, and Nifty stabbing the shit out of Adam. Actually, I have a lot of animated favorites, and it's definitely Mew for the, <laughs> damn, everyone knows it's Mew. My animated ones are good. Thanks for helping me out with them, babe. I love you. Nothing is free in this world, child. For something to escape, there must be an exchange. The words from that call echoed in my head. Something else is about to echo in your head. You'll never get it out. As I walked back to find Anita, a foreboding feeling came over me. Suddenly, I felt a surge of appreciation. Apprehension. <laughs> My bad. <clears throat> like a sixth sense or how animals seem to notice things outside of human awareness. What are your favorite ones? My favorite ones. Put on. Something wasn't right. I could taste it in the air. All I knew was that I had to get back to Anita as soon as possible. Holding myself back from breaking into a full-on sprint, I briskly strode towards the parents' room and opened the door. This gets me every time. Oh, I didn't have time to read it. What the fuck? What's going on? <laughs> They, they want you to read it. They want you to read it so you'll be caught off guard. I was gonna read it, but then I knew it was gonna be like a jump scare. And I was trying to start reading it and oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mm, Anita was sprawled on the floor like a sacrificial offering. Her body displayed in a twisted heap resembling something from a crime scene or Hannibal the TV show. Uh, honestly. Oh, Rachel, you're back quick. Oh my god, you can still talk? Holy shit. Uh, not quick enough. What are you doing on the floor like that? <laughs> Don't mind her. You were gone for some time, and it got dull sitting aimlessly in wait. Anita took it upon herself to entertain me with her dancing. And this is dancing? Might be contortionism. It's interpretive dance. They should have gone with contortionism. I was following her direction. She has a good eye for art. I 100% believe you were following her direction. That's right. Art is an honest expression of the soul. Anita was kind enough to carry out my wishes to play out some of the images that's been living in my mind. Scenes of figurative beauty and a mangle of chaos. You know, I get that, but not with other people. Unless you have friends who are actual contortionists. In which case, hit me up. I have ideas. The fire one and the air nomad one. Those are very you. 
Everything's wet. Now I'm wet. Ugh. I know. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't understand, Anita. You almost gave me a heart attack lying on the floor like that. I thought you were dead for a moment. I thought she was dead every time. It's on, like, when, whenever her chat bubble pops up, I'm still surprised. And all the time I knew Anita, she wasn't good with speaking to new people. For her to enact some sort of choreography for a stranger feels wildly out of character. Um, even the most extroverted extrovert I know, that would seem out of character for. You worry too much. I'm only trying to please our guests. That's what a good host is supposed to do. I'll do anything to make her feel comfortable. Sorry, I can't take her seriously, so I do her an anime voice. If I was weirded out by her display on the floor, I wasn't ready to see what Anita did next. She crawled over to the woman and began rubbing her feet. Her hands worked diligently at massaging her guest, all the while her eyes were fixed on her face. Does this please you? Yes, how very thoughtful of you, my sweet Anita. The look of delight stretched across Anita's face. The compliment greatly pleased her. Um. By the way, I got you something to wear. Here, you should... I extended an arm, offering the garment to the nameless woman, but before I could finish speaking, Anita turned and snatched them off me. Give that to me! She grabbed them off with me with vicious speed, as if I was not... it was not proper to me... as if it was not proper for me to interact with her guests. Hey! Your hands are too careless. You could have bruised her with your clumsy touch. Here you go, my lady. Please wear this. What the absolute hell, Anita? That was totally uncalled for. I'm really concerned with how my friend was behaving all of a sudden. She's too eager to serve this woman. I need to remind her of the situation we're in, which has blatantly changed all of a sudden. Hey, Anita? Can we have the chat outside for a moment? Do we have to? Can't you see that I'm in the middle of something? It's important. Come on, I need you. I need to talk to you alone. Fine, I'll only be gone a short time. Mistress, I'll be back soon. Warn her. So what do you want to talk about? Are you okay? What in the fuck did I just see in there? What do you mean? I left you to mind that woman while I go find something for her to wear, and I come back to see you rolling on the floor and massaging her like some kind of butler. What happened? Why are you jumping through hoops for her? I'm sorry, Rachel. I guess I've been acting a bit weird, huh? It's just... well... She's just so gorgeous, isn't she? I've never met someone so pretty in all my life. I think I'm in love. In love? What the fuck are you talking about? You don't even know her. She doesn't even know her. Has anyone figured out her name? I know. But when you know, you know, right? I mean, she's just so perfect. I've never felt this way about anyone before. Dude, you're going to have to compete with your dad. That's gross. <laughs> don't mess this up for me, will you? I don't know what to do in situations like these. I'm just trying to trying to make her happy and hope that she can feel the same way about me. Warn her. You should be careful. I don't know if I trust her. Why not? She's been held captive for a long time. She's the victim here. Have you heard of Munchausen by proxy and like, um, what's the, um, something syndrome? Oh, 
Stockholm Syndrome. And Nightingale Syndrome, too, actually. Um, don't you think she deserves the benefit of the doubt? Plus, she's also gorgeous. Okay, pretty privilege is alive and well in this game. What does that have to do with anything? Look, <laughs> what the fuck? Um, she, look, she's got you completely wrapped around her finger and has you dancing to her tune. Literally. It just looks like she might be manipula manipulating you. Manipulating. You're just saying that because you're jealous. Of what? What? No. Look, just be careful, okay? Remember that a lot of weird things have been happening tonight. Least of all this stranger appearing out of a damn painting. I know you're just looking out for me, but you don't have to worry. I can handle this. Okay. That's where she done fucked up. I know you're just looking out for me, but you don't have to worry. I can handle this. She thinks she's handling this. I hope so. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Well, I had this bizarre phone call with the police. Should have shut the fuck up about that. They kept saying some cryptic and inappropriate things. Have you ever experienced something like that before? No, maybe you called the wrong number. Yeah, I fucked up 911. How can somebody get the wrong number for emergency services? In any case, if the police aren't going to help us, then we should at least take care of her for the time being. No, we shouldn't. Come on, let's not keep her waiting. Why are you in such a hurry to get back to her? We have a situation here. Lock her in your parents' bedroom and like... Nope. Give that bitch the painting. Give that bitch some flip-flops. Give that bitch her robe and kick her to the curb. What situation? The police are not. So what else is new? It's part of the script. You didn't hear the way he spoke, though. His creepy-ass voice... What he was asking? It didn't sound like how a police officer should behave at all. If it wasn't a police officer, who else was it then? Dispatch. Maybe something intercepted the call. Like it was blocking us from calling for help? I wonder if they can intercept calls, the signal jammers. Do you think? Yeah. They jam everything so they can't intercept calls? Yeah. Yeah. Listen to yourself. You're basing this on nothing. I promise you that everything will be alright. It's late. That guy on the phone was probably drunk and having some fun with you. Now can we please get going? Anita? Yeah? Stay on your guard, okay? Do that for me. <laughs> Don't be so melodramatic. There's a hot bitch in my parents' room. <laughs> I've got this covered. Oh, what's the next thing? Wrong. <laughs> we returned to their bedroom and was immediately given a fright. That is frightful. But very good posture. We almost walked straight into the stranger standing right behind the door. Jeez, you scared me. I heard what the two of you were saying. Okay, well that defeats the purpose of talking in. Uh, fire, do the thing. Dang. Kill it with... Yeah. I heard what the two of you were saying. Huh? I thought I could trust you both, but you two were careless. How disappointing. Also, banhammer that. Hey, we did nothing wrong. We've been doing our best looking out for you. So what's with all the accusations? And why were you spying on us? 
fan hammer that fucker. The um, best viewers on blah blah blah. Just the name. Rich coming from you. You went out of this room to make a phone call. You claim you were speaking with the police, but it's clear that you were communicating with someone else. It wasn't clear to her at the time. She's dumb. I had to ask myself, why put up with this deceit? The answer was clear. You are in on it. Thank you. The one who imprisoned me in the first place? You're in cahoots with him, aren't you? What? This is such bullshit. He must be aware of my escape by now and will stop at nothing to find me. This man is very powerful and his reach goes very far. Okay, you're pretty, but you're not that pretty. You need to chill. <laughs> How do I know you're not one of his allies? Because I'm a teenage girl. Because that is mad and we clearly have nothing to do with this. Bitch, get the fuck out of the house. How convenient. I find my way out of that place and now I'm held inside another captor's lair. No, no captors here. Get the fuck out. You have a gateway that to the world here in your very home. That painting hangs on your wall. Do you honest be honestly believe you can trick me? No, I want you gone. <laughs> As for you, Anita, I'm disappointed in you. Ooh, she's not mad, she's disappointed. Don't think I didn't hear what you said about me. You think you feel love for me and yet you conspire with this bitch? Did you call me a bitch? Oh shit. How can you expect me to return affections to such a treacherous one? She called her a worm. She wouldn't love her if she was a worm. Disgusting. It said woman. I thought it said worm. <laughs> um, no, it's not true. It's not true. I don't have anything to do with it. I really do love you. Mistress, I've never felt anything like this before. I would never intentionally harm you. A wild look spread across Anita's face. She fell to the woman's feet, groveling in a frenzied manner like a dog begging her master for forgiveness. Her voice rose again, only it did not sound like anyone I recognized. The voice was more coarse and sinister. I don't know if I can do that. Oh dear, Anita is no longer home. It's all Rachel's fault. She's the one who's been mean to you. She's jealous of you. She's jealous of your good looks and because I'm in love with you. She can't take it and decided to do all these bad things to you. Hmm. Those are mere words and words can be so full of lies. Are you trying to win me over with more lies? No, never. I worship you, my lady. I want nothing more than to be by your side. You have to believe me. Nothing else matters to me but you. I don't know what shocked me most. Anita's selling me out or her sudden subservience to this woman. However, a new horror came over me when I caught the gaze of the stranger. We locked eyes for an inde indefinite amount of time. She was almost smiling at me with her eyes, a knowing look one might give to an opponent in a game of chess before checkmate. Suddenly, the situation became very clear, and there was an understanding between us. A cold bead of sweat ran down the back of my neck. Her wicked eyes continued to smile at me. Is what you say true, Anina? Are you truly devoted to me? Yes, yes, mistress, I will do anything for you. And do you condemn the actions of your former friend who's conspired to harm your mistress? Yes, I do. Then prove your loyalty to me. Your test is to make a great sacrifice, 
a friend for a queen. Show me what you'll do to those who plot against me. Anita, snap out of it. Can't you see what's happening? Please, this isn't you. Uh, this is her now. Take her now. Anita weightlessly rose to her feet as if lifted by an unseen spectral hand. Her back still turned to me. My pleas didn't seem to reach her. These visuals are not okay. <clears throat> her head spun around. A horrible expression stretched across her face. Something I couldn't imagine any human face capable of pulling. Once again, I saw the demented look in her eyes, and I saw no semblance of the friend I knew. Run. Anita, please don't do this. My words don't faze her. She lets out an animalistic wail and begins sprinting at me full tilt. For your viewing pleasure. Try and make it as cinematic as possible. I didn't have time to think. Instincts took over and I ran out of the room as fast as I could. I didn't turn to look, but I could feel Anita close in pursuit. I ran to Anita's room and tried to slam the door behind me. Anita was right on my heels and threw herself forward, wedging her body between the door. Oof. I give the door a big shove, Ooh, but Anita didn't give an inch. She thrashed like a rabid animal. Her nails scratched my skin. No scratching. Shit. Man. Girl code. With inhuman strength, she smashed through the door and flings me backwards. She stood before me in a challenging state. I had little time to react. Grab chair. A weapon would swing things in my favor. I reached to pick up the chair, but Anita was quick to react. She kicked the chair as I tried to lift it. The chair smacks into my shin. Ow! Reeling from the pain, I stagger back and fall. Suddenly, Anita was on top of me. She tried to pin my hands down. Her demented face looked over me. Saliva splattered about as she screamed and growled. I struggled under the weight of her, twisting this way and that. I wrenched my hands free. Very quickly, her hands found my throat. A scraped grip. I grabbed Anita's thumbs and tried with all my might to pry myself from her grasp. Pulling down with my arms, I was able to pluck away a few fingers. It was enough for me to keep my breath. Anita momentarily surrenders my neck to seize control of my arms. I knew I had to break free from being under her. I whirled my arms from side to side, trying to throw her off balance. I felt her topple ever so slightly to one side. Quickly, I sat up and pulled a leg free. I turn away and climbed up the bed. Anita takes me by the shoulder. We wrestle for control, but I was able to maneuver halfway up the bed. She had me pinned to the side and I lost control over the arm trapped beneath us. With my loose hand, I reached around for something I could use. Pillow. My searching hand settled on something soft. I pulled the pillow down and ran it into Anita's face. Its bulk was enough to make it awkward for her to reach me. Oh god. This is one pillow fight I do not want to watch. I beat against the pillow, attacking Anita behind it. It was not an elegant sight, nothing like the gracefully choreographed moves that you'd see in a movie. This was a chaotic mess. Any onlookers would only see a confusion of limbs snapping at each other. All of a sudden, the pillow I used as a protective shield was ripped from me. I saw Anita's face, dim, 
behind the light from the window. Blood was trickling freely from her nose and lips. Her eyes burned with fury, intensified by the taste of blood in the air. She grunted and slammed her head between my eyes. The light was knocked out of me. Stars filled my vision. I was too dazed to see what was going on, but everything just descended into darkness, and my senses became muffled. I tried to scream, but it came out faint. I needed to press the pillow harder over my face. I reached blindly for her, hoping against hope for something that could save me. I feel my arms go numb. I couldn't summon the strength to dislodge the weight of Anita on top of me. Finn. Slowly, I feel the life smother out of me. In these times, in a split second, when you know your time is up, you might be led to believe that one's life flashes before your eyes. All the choices in life that you've made, all the happiness and regrets, for me, nothing like that materialized. Instead, I saw a version of Hannah, my little sister, long lost in time, frozen against an empty background, as sweet as I remember her. The image gives me one last feeling of warmth. I feel my last ounce of life giving way, and the vision of Hannah dissolves until only her eyes remain eyes holding none of the sweetness from before, eyes with malice and hatred were the last thing that I saw. Ending 5, The Big Sleep. I think that's all we have time for today, but thank you for hanging out. Um, feel free to leave a comment below, and I really hope to see you next time so we can unlock more endings in Grotesque Beauty.